Hello, my name is Derek Robinson, and I'm going to be talking about chocolatey and DC light. We're going to be talking about several products in this talk, but we do not specifically endorse or recommend any of them. My name is Derek Robinson. I'm a systems engineer at Walmart. I've worked on Windows servers for over eight years, and I've worked on Puppet and Chocolatey for over three. Before we get started, I'd like to just talk about some of the terms we're going to use. Uh, desired State Configuration, or DSC, and this is a platform built in PowerShell to create generic scripts and modules for use with Chef, Puppet, Ansible. Um, it is a feature of PowerShell 4 and above, and to use DSC with Puppet, you need to use at least PowerShell 5 because of the invoke DSC resource commandlet. Puppet modules, there are two main ones that deal with DSC. Both are supported from Puppet. The first one is DSC. This is the batteries included module and it's been out for a, a few years. It includes all of the Microsoft DSC resources, resources, which there's over 50 of them. And they use a build process to go through and create types and providers and testing, and it's a very robust module. It uses plugin sync to push all the resources to your end nodes. The DSC Lite Puppet module is a more DIY DSC kit. It doesn't include any DSC resources by default, and it's for more advanced usage. If you're just getting started with Puppet and DSC, I would recommend starting with the DSC module as it has a lot more safety and you won't get as frustrated trying to figure out how to use DSC and Puppet together. The other thing we'll use is Chocolatey. And this is a package managed for Windows and we use it for MSIs, executables, and zip files. So to start out with, I want to talk about why we chose to use DSC Lite. At Walmart, we use several custom DSC resources. We, there were some things that we wanted to do that there wasn't a Puppet module for, and there wasn't a DSC resource already created for. So we wrote them ourselves since it was just PowerShell. Um, as Windows admins, we were very comfortable with it, and so it was easy to kind of learn how to use it. The reason we went with DSC Lite is there's support for class-based DSC resources. And this is something that is newer um, with PowerShell 5 and maybe 5.1. And it's a lot easier than the MOF-based resources. There's also no rebuild process needed with DSC Lite since it doesn't include the DSC resources or create the types and providers. And this is nice since we have several different groups that are writing DSC resources or we're using community. Anytime those update, we don't have to rebuild the entire pro uh, DSC module. There's also some plugin sync benefits since the resources aren't being included, and I'll talk about those in the next slide. Now, let's discuss the plugin sync benefits. So, when we started looking at the DSC resources we actually use versus what was in the Puppet DSC module, we realized that we only used nine modules overall one community module, four custom ones that we'd written, and then four from the Microsoft resources. So we had over 1,100 files in the Puppet DSC resource, and we were able to bring that down to 400 files. Um, we cut our whole footprint by a third. And while this doesn't sound like much, when you start to think about it, this is over not just the Windows boxes, but Plugin Sync is sending this to all of our Linux servers too. And they don't use DSC at all. So it's not only the bandwidth and the network that's being used for Plugin Sync, but every time Puppet runs, it's going to check all 1100 files. And that's a lot of CPU usage for servers that won't use it at all. So if since you have to distribute these resources yourself and you're not using plugin sync anymore, there are three main options of how to actually distribute your DSC resources. 
And all of these are on the DSC Lite README. So if you want to get more information, please look there. The first one is PowerShell Gallery using an exec and just pulling them from the Microsoft PowerShell Gallery. There's also a PowerShell module in the Forge. Um, it's pretty awesome, and I recommend looking at that. There's also Chocolatey. You can package up DSC resources internally, and if you have a NuGet feed, um, store them yourself. So we chose to use Chocolatey for several reasons. One of those is, well, the main ones is that we're already using Chocolatey. Um, we already have kind of a lot of build processes around it. Uh, we know how to build the packages, and we have a NuGet feed for it. There's greater control of what DSC resources could be used. Since we control what's in the package through our build process, we know what's actually being deployed out there. And since we have several custom internal DSC resources, we don't want to put those on the PowerShell gallery and then have to download them. Or we didn't want to have to create a whole new NuGet feed just for these few resources. And instead we can just put them into Chocolatey itself. So creating a chocolatey package for your DSC resources, there are two main options. The one, the first option is just one chocolatey package, all of your DSC resources inside it. The DSC resources are just files, it's PowerShell modules, and you can unzip them into the system folder. You can also package each resource separately. And then that way, if you wanna have certain resources only on certain computers to reduce the footprint even smaller and um, be a little more dynamic with that. It just depends on how your uh, manifest and how your team wants to deal with that. The nice thing about Chocolatey is there's a lot of helpers and it's all PowerShell. So this is a sample script of unzipping a DSC module folder into the PowerShell modules. So we take DSC module zip, and then we put the destination as program files, Windows PowerShell modules. And then all we have to do is call the get chocolatey unzip function and chocolatey handles all of it and even reports back any errors. It makes it very simple with Puppet. Now, if you want to take all of this a step further, you can use do a build pipeline to take any time you change your DSC resources, you can kick off a Pasaki script, and then this will handle all of your pester tests, your script analyzer. Um, for us, we use pester since it's PowerShell. It's easy to test for things like, are people adding themselves to administrator? Are your functions working correctly? Um, we have some specific or tests for DSC resources, but we also have just a lot of generic to make sure we're not shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, we don't want our DSC resources to actually run shutdown commands, um, stuff like that. Then we can do script analyzer to make sure they're doing good code practices. And then there's a PS deploy module so that if you have multiple resources or chocolatey uh, repositories, that you can put all of those, if you have like a test repository and a build or a production, you could push to both using a DSL. So the nice thing about all of this is it's all stuff that you can iterate and build upon and then create a lot of checks and balances so that your team doesn't have to manually do everything. These, can, these scripts and build pipelines can handle themselves.